welcome to Chemistry Travels. Today we have the fifth question of the Concept Through Question series and today's question is from JAM 2016 paper. So the question says that the effective nuclear charge for 3D electron in vanadium with atomic number 23 according to the Slater's rule is dash. So to solve this question we should learn the concept of effective nuclear charge which involves the Slater's rule for calculating the effective nuclear charge associated with electrons in atoms. So coming to the concept, first let's consider that I have an atom with me. So this atom would have a central nucleus which consists of the positively charged protons and the neutral neutrons, right? And around the central nucleus, I would be having my electrons. If it's a single electron system, I would have just one electron around the nucleus and I can experience a force between, an attractive force between the positively charged nucleus and my negatively charged electron. They would have an attractive force. Now consider the case of multi-electron systems where I have more than one electron. So what happens in this case, each of the electron would be attracted by the positively charged nucleus of the atom at the same time they would be repelled by the other electrons that are present in the inner shell. If I consider an electron at the outer orbital, it would have attraction from the central nucleus at the same time have repulsion from all other negatively charged electrons. Right. Now, so as a result of this repulsion, what happens? The positive charge it experiences decreases. That is, attractive force would decrease because of the repulsion by other electrons. The attractive force from the nucleus would be decreased for the outermost electrons. Okay. Now, those inner electrons which cause this repulsion, the inner electrons that cause this repulsion is called the shielding electrons and this repulsion effect, the effect of repulsion is called the shielding effect or the screening effect. They are protecting the positive charge from attracting the negative charge electrons that are present outside. They are shielding the positive charge. They are the shielding electrons and the effect is shielding effect. And if we have larger the number of these shielding electrons, as the number of inner electrons increases, the outer electrons would experience lesser force, lesser attraction. Lesser will be larger the number of shielding electrons. Lesser would be the attraction between the nucleus and the outer orbital electrons because some amount of the positive charge is cancelled by this negatively charged electrons repulsion. Clear? Okay, so we know that if there were no other inner electrons, if it was if it was a single electron system, then whatever is the charge of the proton, all that charge would be actually felt by the electron that as attractive forces. But now, since we have the shielding electrons, they would prevent the attraction. So as a result, there would be a decrease in the actual charge that is felt by each of the outer electrons. And that actual charge felt by each of the outer electron is equal to the charge from the protons because the central nucleus would give a charge which is equivalent to the charge of the protons. Right. And that minus the charge from the negative minus the negative charges from all other electrons. So charge of the proton minus the charge from all the other inner electrons would be the actual charge felt by an electron. And this net positive charge, this actual in the positive net positive charge that is felt by the outer electrons particles, outer electronic particles, the net positive charge of the nucleus that causes this attraction. After removing the repulsion part, whatever charge is left, that net positive charge that is felt by the outer electrons is called the effective nuclear charge. So it's not equivalent to the charge of the protons, there would be a decrease in the value. And it can be calculated by a formula which is given by Z effective is Z minus sigma. Z effective is the effective nuclear charge. Z is the expected nuclear charge. Like without considering those electrons, what would have been the nuclear charge? And sigma is the shielding or the screening constant which depends on all those inner electrons which give rise to some amount of shielding. And this equation or this z effective and screening constant everything can be calculated with the help of Slater's rule. Okay.
effective nuclear charge can be used to explain the trends in the periodic table that is shown for the uh, atomic radii and the ionization energy as we move from left to right and uh, at from top to bottom. So if we're moving from left to right uh, along the periodic table, what happens? Atomic number increases and electrons get added in the same shell. It does not go to the next shell. So electrons, as the atomic number increases, more electrons are being added and they get added in the same shell, right? So now here the point to be noted is that electrons in the same principal shell, they are not very effective in shielding the nuclear charge. Compared to the electrons in the inner electrons, compared to inner electrons, electrons from the same uh, uh, shell are not that effective in shielding. They cause repulsion to some extent, but since they are in the same energy level, same principal shell, they are not that effective in shielding. Okay. Now, so here the electrons are being added in the same shell. So they, they are not that effective in shielding. So in that case, the effective nuclear charge is not being decreased. But as we move from one side to other, the number of protons, atomic number increases. So the number of protons are increasing. And hence, the num effective nuclear charge also increases. There is no much decrease in the value. As number of protons increases, the effective nuclear charge also is increasing because the electrons are added in the same shell. Okay. And when this effective nuclear charge increases, more would be the attraction of the outermost electrons. And more the attraction means if they are strongly attracted, then the radii, atomic radii would decrease. And if atomic radius is decreased and the electrons, outer electrons are strongly held to the nucleus means it is difficult to remove those electrons. So ionization energy would be high. What is ionization energy? The energy needed to remove those outer electrons, right? So, and since they are strongly held to the nucleus, the effective nuclear charge experienced by the outer electrons are high as we move from one side to the other in, along the period, period. So, the ionization energy would increase and atomic radii would decrease. Now, if I come down the group, so I'm coming down the group from top to bottom. Now, here I have two shells and as I come down the group, what happens? Electrons get added in the next level like 2D. 2 or um, the n equal to 2 level, then n equal to 3 level, n equal to 4 level. So like that, it keeps coming down. The energy levels keep increasing, right? So if I come down, so now here I have initially in this picture, I'm having two shells, right? Two energy levels. Now as I come down, one more shell gets added. The electrons are going to the next level. So which means that the inner electrons are increasing. Electrons are not being added in the same shell. Rather, they're being added in new shells. So all the other electrons now become the inner electrons. So as inner electrons increases, the shielding would increase, right? So as inner electrons increases, the number of shielding electrons are increasing. So in that case, the effective nuclear charge would decrease and effective nuclear charge experienced by the outer electron is less. In that case, their attraction would be lesser. So atomic radii would increase and since the Attraction is not that much, they are, they are not strongly attracted. So, in that case, I can say that my ionization energy decreases. It is easier to remove electrons from the outer orbit. Okay, that is what happens when we move from top to bottom across the groups. And if you move from left to right across the periods, ionization energy increases. And if when I come from top to bottom, ionization energy decreases because of this variation in effective nuclear charge. So now let's look into the Slater's rule to calculate the magnitude of this effective nuclear charge experienced by the electrons in an atom from the central nucleus. So the first step is to write the electronic configuration of the atom given. Whichever atom you are considering, we have to write the electronic configuration and group them as given here in brackets. 1s, then 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p together, 3d is one group, 4s, 4p, then 4d one group, 4f one group. Like that, I have to group them together and write the electronic configuration of the atom that I consider. First step. Coming to the second step, what is the second step? Now, I have to identify the electron of interest and ignore all electrons in higher group. What does that mean? So, if I have to find the effective atomic number of 3D electron, then I have to consider 3D electrons alone and all the other groups that are lying, all the higher energy levels like the 4S, 4P, 4F, 4D and all other electrons 
has to be ignored. I should not consider them. Whichever the electron I am concerned about, whichever shell electron, 3s electron or 3p electron, whichever or 2s, 2p, any electron that I am considered, just consider that. And all those other higher electrons, higher in our group electrons, like all the ones to the after writing the electronic configuration, I identify the one that I have to consider for calculating the effective numbers and all those electrons lying to the right of it can be cancelled off. That does not cause any shielding, only the inner electrons. The electrons from the same shell and the electrons that are inside, inner electrons cause this uh, shielding. The outer electrons would not cause any shielding for a particular electron. So, all those outer electrons can be ignored or neglected. Okay, that was step 2. Now, coming to step 3. What is step 3? I have to calculate the shielding contribution by each of the electrons. How much does each of the electron contribute to the shielding? Now, if I have an S or a P shell, if my electrons are in the S subshell or the P subshell, I'm considering the Slater's rule I'm using to calculate effective uh, nuclear charge for an electron in an S subshell or a P subshell means I have a table of values consisting of the different value shielding values that is first thing is the N group electrons N is the principal quantum number so all those electrons that are present in the N quant uh, principal quantum number N N energy level N all those electrons would give rise to a contribution of 0.35. But in case where I have just 1s electron, if I'm having like hydrogen where I have 1s2, so just 1s electron is there means in that case the n value would be 0.3. But in all other cases, my uh, electrons in the n group would give rise to a contribution of 0.35. Okay. Next, after uh, considering the contribution of electrons in the nth group, nth level, I come down to the lower level, which is n minus 1. And for S and P, when I'm considering S and P electrons, so the n minus 1 group electrons, the nth group would give 0.35 as the value shielding. And for n minus 1 level electrons, electrons lying in n minus 1 level, the contribution for the shielding would be 0.85. And as I come even more down, when I consider all n minus 2, n minus 3 and all other lower energy levels, the electrons in those groups, you know, those energy levels would give rise to a contribution of 1. Understood. This is the case when I consider an electron in the S or P orbital. Now, if I have an electron in the D and the F orbital, I'm considering an electron in the D subshell or the F subshell and I have to calculate the uh, effective nuclear charge means then... All those electrons lying in the same group, that would give rise to a contribution of 0.35. And all those in the lower group would give rise to a contribution of 1. So, the difference between S and P, um, SP and the DF is that in SP, S or P electron case, I am considering the energy levels in the n energy level, in the n minus 1 energy level and the lower energy levels. But in D and F orbitals, when I am considering electrons in D and F orbitals, I am not considering the energy levels, nth level, n minus 1. That is not what I am considering. I am considering the groups. Groups are the ones that I have made first itself. See, here we can see 1s is one group, 2s, 2p is another group, 3s, 3p is another group. That groups that I have made, right? That I have to consider. Those groups I have to consider for D or F electrons. Whereas the N value is considered in like the energy level, whether it's in the thir third energy level or the second energy level, that has to be considered in case of the S or P electrons. Okay, we'll solve that with examples later on. Now, after finding the contribution, each inner electron and each electron in the same shell, uh, shell, how much it is contributing to shielding, we calculate that. And the total shielding constant would be the sum of all these values, like how many electrons are there into the, their corresponding shielding value. So, when I sum all of them, I would get my shielding constant sigma. At my Z effective to calculate the effective nuclear charge, the shielding constant should be subtracted from the expected nuclear charge. Like we have number of protons or uh, that would give rise to a nuclear charge. So that minus the shielding constant would give rise to my effective nuclear charge. So these are the different steps that are involved. Clear? Okay, so let's understand these steps with the help of an example. 
So I have taken the example of iron here. Iron has atomic number 26. So the number of protons would be 26. So my Z value, the expected nuclear charge would be 26. But it has some amount of shielding due to the inner electrons and all. So let's calculate what is the effective nuclear charge with the help of Slater's rule. So the first step to be followed is to write the electronic configuration and group them. Okay, so here is the configuration for ion which has atomic number 26. So the configuration is 1s2, then 2s2, 2p6 is one group, then 3s2, 3p6 is another group, 3d6 is another group and I have 4s2. Now let's consider the case of a porous electron and calculate the effective nuclear charge experienced by a porous electron. Okay, so what are the steps involved in that? I have to stable here since an electron is considered in the S or the P subshell if I'm considering. These are the shielding values. Okay, I should consider the electrons from the nth energy level, n minus 1th energy level and all the other lower energy levels. So first I have to find out the electrons in each of these energy levels. So since I'm considering a 4s electron, so 4s means 4 would be my n value. So electrons in the 4s orbital would be the nth group electrons. And 4 minus 1, 3, that would be the n minus 1th level electrons. So 3s2, 3p6 and 3d6 would be in the n minus 1th energy level. And all the other ones, the lower ones, 1s2, 2s2 and 2p6 would be classified in the lower as the lower group electrons. And each of them has a different contribution. So, it's coming to the nth group. Now, I have the elect if I have my 4s subshell here, I would be having one of the electrons here. Like I have one electron here and I have one electron here. I'm having 4s2, right? I'm having two electrons. So, out of these two electrons, I am considering one of the electrons to calculate the effective nuclear charge. So, the electron that I consider would experience a repulsion from the other electron in the same shell, right? Porous is having two electrons, one of it I am considering and the other electron would experience repulsion, would cause a repulsion to the electron that I am considering. So, that is why for the nth group, I can write it as 0.35 into 1. That another electron which causes the repulsion would give a shielding of 0.35. And there is only one such electron in the porous shell that is causing this repulsion. So, that is why this 0.35 into 1 which gives a value of 0.35. Next, the n minus 1th group. In the n minus 1th group, I have 3s, 3p, 3d. So, 6 plus 6 plus 2. 3s2, 3p6 and 3d6. So 6 plus 6 plus 2, that's 14 electrons. And each electron would give rise to a contribution or shielding contribution of 0.85. And that's how we have 11.9. Coming to the lower electron, that means 1s2, 2s2 and 2p6. So this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 together would give rise to 10 electrons. 6 plus 2 plus 2, 10 electrons. And each of those electrons give a contribution of 1 to the shielding. So, that value comes out to be 10. Now, to calculate the screening constant, next step, I have to add all these values. It is a summation of these values. The screening constant sigma is sum of all this. So, that is 10 plus 11.9 plus 0.35. That would give rise to 22.25. Right? Now, I got the screening constant. Now, next step is to calculate the effective nuclear charge. For that, I should subtract the screening constant from the expected nuclear charge. So, since the atomic number was 26, the expected nuclear charge Z was 26. And I have to subtract the screening constant, the shielding by all other ele inner electrons and the electrons in the same shell that gave rise to a value of 22.5. So, 26 minus 22.5 and the effective nuclear charge experienced by a porous electron comes out to be 3.75. Understood. This is how we can apply the Slater's rule to calculate the effective nuclear charge for any electron in a particular atom. Now let's look into our original question. So in this question, they've asked for the effective nuclear charge of a 3D electron in vanadium. We have to use Slater's rule and calculate the effective nuclear charge for 3D electron in vanadium and the atomic number is given to be 23. So, first step is to, I have to, in the first step, I write the configuration and group them. So, I wrote the configurations 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, then 3s2, 3p6, 3d3 and 4s2. This is the configuration for vanadium with atomic number 23. So, what is the next step? I have to find out the effective nuclear charge for a 3d electron. So, for that, first thing is, since I am considering an electron in 3d, 
all the other electrons in the higher energy levels can be cancelled off. So, I don't have to consider the porous electrons. Porous means it's in a higher energy level. So, those electrons need not be considered. They can be ignored. I have to consider only those in 3D and the lower levels. Okay. Now, here I have the table according to Slater's rule giving rise to the values of the contribution of each of the electrons. Now, unlike the S and P orbitals, here for D and F orbital cases, I have to consider the groups. Same group electron and lower group electrons. In earlier case, it was the S or the P orbital that is considered means I have to look into the energy levels, n energy level, n minus 1 energy level like that. But here I consider the groups. So, what are the same group electrons and what are the lower group electrons? So, this 3D, I'm considering an electron in the 3D to calculate the effective nuclear charge. And 3D is acting as a group. When I write the electronic configuration group term, 3D is one group. So, 3D is the same. Electrons in 3D would act as the same group electrons. And all the other ones, 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S and 3P, all those groups would be the lower group electrons. Okay. Now, the contribution I have to calculate. For calculating the screening constant, I have to calculate the contribution by the same group electrons and the lower group electrons. So, same group electron means, like if I have my 3D here, 3D would have 3 electrons, 3D, 3 it is, 1, 2, 3. So, it is having, 3D is having 3 electrons. So, out of these 3 electrons, I am considering one of it, right? I am considering one of the 3D electrons to calculate effective, uh, effective nuclear charge. So, this electron that I consider would experience repulsion from the other two electrons in the 3D shell, right? That is why and each of those electrons would give rise to a contribution of 0.35 and two such electrons are there. So, I can say it is 0.35 into 2. So, the value is 0.7 by the same group electrons. Now, coming to the lower group electrons, how many electrons are there? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p6. Totally, there are 18 such electrons are there. In all those together, 18. And each of the lower group electron can give rise to a shielding contribution of 1. So, the magnitude comes out to be 18. Now, to calculate the screening constant sigma, I have to sum them up. These values, that is 18 and 0.7 can be summed up to 18.7. Next step is to calculate the effective nuclear charge, sigma effect, is Z effective. That is the expected nuclear charge minus the screening constant. Since vanadium has atomic number 23, it has number of protons to be 23. So, I can say Z value is 23 and 23 minus the screening constant of 18.7 would give rise to a value of 4.3. So, the effective nuclear charge experienced by an electron in the 3D orbital would be 4.3 in case of vanadium. Clear? So, for this question, I can write out the answer to be 4.3 as the value. Okay. So, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much.